Hello and welcome to Evening Reading and Prayer. It's Tuesday, November the 29th of 2022. We begin with a reading from the book Christmas in Prose and Verse. Christmas Carol by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Ring out, ye bells, all nature swells with gladness of the wondrous story. The world was lorn, but Christ is born to change our sadness into glory. Sing, earthlings, sing. Tonight a king hath come from heaven's high throne to bless us. The outstretched hand o'er all the land is raised in pity to caress us. Come at his call, be joyful all, away with mourning and with sadness. The heavenly choir with holy fire their voices raise in songs of gladness. The darkness breaks and dawn awakes, her cheeks suffused with youthful blushes. The rocks and stones in holy tones are singing sweeter than the thrushes. Then why should we in silence be when nature lends her voice to praises, when heaven and earth proclaim the truth of him for whom that lone star blazes? No, be not still, but with a will strike all your harps and set them ringing. On hill and heath let every breath throw all its power into singing. Our prayers this evening come from the worship resource Hear our prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we shall soon begin the unpacking process, for we have moved into a new season of the church year. During the days of Advent, we unpack beloved scripture stories, well-loved carols, remembrances of holidays past, decorations for halls and walls and mantles. Help us to do so with attentiveness and joy. Mighty God, we feel alive in spirit, for we are keenly anticipating events ahead. During the days of Advent, we anticipate familiar festive smells from the kitchen, parcels and letters in the mail, reenactments of long-standing traditions, arrivals of guests. Help us to do so with appreciation and contentment. Gracious God, we reach out toward you and toward our neighbors, for we recognize the abundant opportunities for giving. During the days of Advent, we give holiday hugs to many, support to persons in need, serious thought to our Christian calling, focused attention to the wonder of your love. Help us to do so with reverence and imagination. <clears throat> we long to celebrate the Christ child's birth, and we desire to keep close company with you in our weeks of preparation. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Our first scripture reading is Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen have gotten out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to burst. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were astounded at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. And from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 12 to 17. Well, now, when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth 
and made his home in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Our reading this evening comes from the author Max Lucado, Celebrating Christmas with Jesus, an Advent devotional. And this particular devotion is called Jesus Calls Peter, James, and John. Push out into the deep, Peter. Let's fish. I groaned. I looked at John. We were thinking the same thing. As long as he wanted to use the boat for a platform to speak, that was fine. But to use it for a fishing boat, that was our territory. I started to tell this carpenter teacher, you stick to preaching and I'll stick to fishing, but I was more polite. We worked all night. We didn't catch a thing. With every pull of the paddle, I grumbled. No way, no way, impossible. I may not know much, but I know fishing. And all we're going to come back with are some wet nets. Finally, we cast anchor. I picked up the heavy netting, held it waist high, and started to throw it. That's when I caught a glimpse of Jesus out of the corner of my eye. His expression stopped me in mid-motion. He noticed me looking at him, and he tried to hide the smile, but it persisted. Boy, is he in for a disappointment, I thought, as I threw the net. I wrapped the rope once around my hand and sat back for the long wait. But there was no wait. The slack rope yanked taut and tried to pull me overboard. I set my feet against the side of the boat and yelled for help. We got the net in just before it began to tear. I'd never seen such a catch. We began to take in water. John screamed for the other boat to help us. It was quite a scene. Four fishermen in two boats, knee deep in fish, and one carpenter seated on our bow, relishing the pandemonium. It was a scene I would see many times over the next couple of years. In cemeteries with the dead, on hillsides with the hungry, in storms with the frightened, on roadsides with the sick. The characters would change, but the theme wouldn't. When we would say, no way, he would say, my way. Then the ones who doubted would scramble to salvage the blessing, and the one who gave it would savor the surprise. Let us pray. God of all creation, we offer our prayer today for the church. Not out of parochial concerns, but rather with passionate hopes. We give thanks first and foremost for your presence and your promise of empowerment. By our strength and resources alone, we cannot accomplish even a small portion of what we are capable of doing. We become dispirited, and the good news is less than fervently conveyed. But by your grace, the Spirit can renew us, giving energy and direction. We ask that you help us become an ever more joyous servant people. Through the exercise of love, make us more fit in, fe in faith and fellowship. Enable us in the future, as you have in the past, to be a caring church. Persons who struggle with complex issues in seeking your will. Persons who sense the need to be stewards of the good earth. Persons who risk outreach. Persons who dare to share deeply with one another. Uniting now in silent prayers of supplication and thanksgiving, we continue to pray.
We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Allow your longings to speak from within. Permit God's promise to occupy your minds and inhabit your hearts. Prepare your spirits for the coming of Christ. Amen. Good night.